another adventure. Headed out to pick up the group at the Alden Village Center. Gonna be doing today by myself at almost 200 kilometers, about 120 some miles. The group will be doing probably about 140 to 150K on the route. We're going to Richards, Texas. Should be a pretty interesting ride. Uh, I've advertised we're gonna keep it steady for those who are gonna do the entire route. We're not gonna be riding for those heroes that show up. So, I think you enjoy the clips we'll put together for you. On this ride, I left Northampton, rode into the woodlands. We picked up the group at the Alden Village Center, headed out, research for us. Honia Egypt Road pace was fast. We got a lot of guys from Mo's group that joined us all the way in. I let the group go on Mill Route, joined them in Montgomery. We continued into the forest that's off camera. We went out Mount Pleasant Road to 149. We took Grissom Trail. We went to Tagliaferro Road, Cedar Hill. Came back around on Base Chapel into Richards, Texas. Continued back after the stop at Richards into Dacus, taking Johnson Road to 1097, all the way through Montgomery, Old Plantersville Road to Spring Branch Road. We stopped at Keenan, and after Keenan, we went into the neighborhood, the Grand Lake Estates, back to Honia Egypt Road. On the last climb into town, I backed off the pace, rode in. It was a very long ride, very good, very fast. I think you will love the clips we put together for you. Yeah, just get, Let's get some out of here. I probably should go push that because a car behind us, but I don't think it will activate. Yeah, I'll be right back. It's on. Let me go. Laura, let me see if you can push that thing because... Yeah, there is a, a car behind us, but he's not on the sensors. It's uh, going to push the uh, pedestrian signal so that the light will cycle and change for us. Mr. Barrett! Yeah. No, we're going to Anderson. Yeah, Richard. Oh, I thought we were going to Anderson. No, Richard. Oh, Richard. It's 90 miles from the start, so it'll yeah, we, uh, we're going to Richards, Texas. Uh, Anderson's further out. <laughs> if we did Anderson, it'd be like 130 miles or something. This is 1488 at Egypt Lane. And it, the name changes from Egypt Lane to Huffsmith Conroe Road when we cross. So you see where it says Egypt Lane. If you look at that arrow on the right in the little map, this becomes Huff, Huffsmith Conroe Road. Some rider was here, he's turning. He was not with us, he was on the road at the same time. I was wondering who it was. This is Jerry on the left. That's Mike Barreras on the right. There's Laura in front in the, looks like a lime green or key lime. And her socks matches the, the jersey, the pops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Mike Barreras, his favorite color combination is black and gold. He's got regular bottles on the bike today. That was the first time I've seen that in a long time. And it's, the bottles are gold. They match his gold chain ring. Something is not smooth. So we're going through the neighborhoods here. We're going to towards uh, Fish Creek. That would drive me crazy. 2978, and then we're going to take Honia, Egypt. I I had put the route out, and the way that software on Garmin Connect works is when you make a change, say somewhat further down the route, it uses certain parameters like follow popular roads, follow 
regular roads, depending on what, what the setting is, you'll make a change later in the route. Then it will, it, will, it will make a change early in the route. And I did not come back and check. So it, I, I had intended for us to use Fish Creek to get out, but it flipped us to Ponya Egypt Road. So when we turn onto Fish Creek, I'm telling the guys straight. Then Paul says, nah, the map said we're supposed to go left. So I said, ah, okay, let's go left. So we end up on Honia Egypt Road. So I'm going to start double checking whenever I make a change later in the route because the Garmin software not being very user friendly, it, uh, it doesn't lock down your route unless you put a placeholder there. So those are the things I'm going to clean up. This ride ended up being very fast. So when we got into the mail route area, I pulled out of the line because I know that I was doing almost seven hours. So you have to pay attention to, first of all, what your plan is. You have to be disciplined, okay? You have to follow your plan. You can't let other people dictate what you do unless it fits with your plan. So as long as I was staying within my, what I call my aerobic zone, I try to stay sweet spot or lower. So I'm, I'm burning fats mostly. I stay with the group. Once it started getting me into anaerobic zones for long periods of time, that's when I let them go. As a result, you end up finishing your ride very strong, especially on a day where you're doing in excess of six hours. So there's a car turning we're in his way, Peter moves. That's why you need to use one lane. And, you know, riders like to spread out. Stay on your side of the road. So this is where we turn and then somebody, I, I see riders going left, Jerry. And I saw to Jerry, we're going straight. And then Paul corrects me, he's all on the map. According to the map, he said to go here though. So what happened is when you make a change later yeah. in the ride on, on, a, on, a, on a route on Garmin Connect, sometimes it can change your beginning and it will, it will decide, oh, you're going to follow this popular route depending on the settings. So I'm going to start watching that and, and I'm going to use, they have these little placeholders you can put there that will lock the earlier part of the route. But it's a constant evolution. Jerry. Hey, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jerry asked me if I've been riding. I told him, yes, I have been riding. I told him I rode with Romeo on Thursday. He always asks that. I like riding with Jerry. So I told him, yeah, I've been riding. And, uh, at, at the end of the ride, it's not on camera because by the time I got to Taco, they had, Paul had already turned off the camera. I, because I let the group go in mill ride, by the time I got to Taco, one of the riders that ride with us is Yusuf. He came over to me and said, did you have a, mechanic, a mechanical? Did you have a mechanical? And I told him, no, I didn't have a mechanical. I did not want to go that fast. Remember that. It is your choice how fast you ride, who you ride with, and for how long? Don't feel pressured to stay with a group that's going either too fast or too slow for whatever you want to do, you know? So, I mean, with a group that's going too slow, you could probably sit at the front if it meets the, the character of that group if you're not going too fast for them. But if the group is going too fast for what you want to do that day, let them go. You don't owe anybody any explanation or anything. And don't feel like you got to make up a story. Just let them know. The guy was surprised when I said I did not want to go that fast. He was speechless. Because he, he was genuinely concerned, I think. Because as soon as I got there, because once, once I get there behind the group, I'm about maybe 30 seconds to a minute behind them. I want to go in, fill up my bottles, use the restroom. So we're ready to go. I don't want to mess around chatting. So I was putting my bike up when he asked me, did you have a mechanical? And I said, no, I did not want to go that fast. And he, he didn't say anything else. I could tell he didn't expect that answer. He expected me to say, oh, I had a mechanical. I said, what, what the heck I need to make up a story for? I chose to let the group go. I know what I'm doing when I get on my bike. Before I leave home, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm playing it. 
you know so i didn't really want to go that fast in the first hour and then struggle to finish the ride because the ride was very long we're going all the way to richest texas the group is doing almost 90 miles i'm doing like 110 115 easy i wanted to finish my ride strong so uh you have to listen to yourself and as long as i was sitting in a group and i was not going into too many anaerobic efforts i stayed in a group but once we got to the point where i'm like i'm spending too much time in the red zone i'm like let me let me go ahead and chill to keep my body fat burning because most of my training i stay aerobic so i can run on fats because we have an endless supply of fats in our body you got to remember that if you teach your body to burn fat you still need, you still use a little bit of carbohydrate to, to burn fats but you're not going to deplete your glycogen stores because you really don't the body doesn't store that much glycogen so you want to sip your glycogen and run mostly on fat and the only way to do that is to train your body to process fats so eventually you will be processing fats as you even go faster i hope it makes sense there's a bunch of videos and books and stuff written about that that you can research if you want but that's that's the way i train so that most of the ride i'm riding aerobically and you teach your body to where your zone your your aerobic zone becomes a wider range and so you have more endurance in a long ride so you don't you don't hit the wall you hit the wall when you run out of carbs because if you're going so hard to where you're not running on fats anymore your carbs are depleted pretty quickly you got maybe enough carbs for 30 miles maybe i'm estimating i mean you know body doesn't store that much that's why everybody takes these energy drinks and more carbohydrate drinks to kind of top off their fuel because your body runs out of carbs but if you teach your body and you train properly to use fats mostly then you save that carb for when you really need to do your explosive efforts so remember that so you don't want to burn because it takes a while after you start processing your glycogen you know going so hard for the body to switch back you got to back off it takes some time so you got to pay attention you know and and that comes with experience and you really and, and discipline you know don't let other people dictate what you do so you see all this part i'm like 133 most of my training is 140 or below for me you have to find your aerobic zone so eventually you will be going faster in your aerobic zone and that's your goal that's training and then what ends up happening you you you, you burn fat you get leaner and then you continue to eat well balance nutrition so that you don't deplete your, you don't want to burn your protein when you're working out that's why you take food with you but don't just take carbs you know take some bars like uh, granola bars or make a sandwich at home or whatever you know like mo does you will wrap his sandwich in uh aluminum foil or whatever take the food that you eat at home that you can get in bite sizes and, and fix them and put them in your, your pocket and head out you don't need to just be like just be eating gels and all these sugars it's not a you know it's not the best thing for you per se plus they're hard on your dental work you know so eat eat food when you're on the ride especially early get the food in there so your body can process it because when you start to go hard if you choose to later you don't want your stomach to be digesting food when you start hammering so once i start going much over 150 beats then my breathing starts to change to where i'm getting into tempo then i start to really try to be even more conservative you know everybody's aerobic zone is different everybody fat burning zone you got to find yours they have different formulas that you can use you can do some testing or whatever but you want to be riding most that's that 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 gives you the ability to ride consistently and that's how you improve so you look forward to your ride don't treat your ride like a bear is chasing you and you you you're tense and stressed and you have this adrenaline all the time you you can't race every day you can't race every ride you need to uh, uh have rides where you're you're really having fun and enjoying the bike 
even in the grand tours the top people do not go full gas every stage there are stages where they sit in you hear about it you hear the commentary they sit on their teammates wheels and whatever else you have to use your head okay don't feel like you have anything to prove and don't feel guilty because you let somebody go or let the group go as long as you know why okay because a lot of people just riding bikes they don't have a training plan they don't have a coach or anything like that they don't know what they're doing so the group is dictating what they do never feel that you owe anyone an explanation when you let the group go or when you go off the front or when you stay with the group the only people who need to know are people you tight with but really you the only one who need to know if you want to share with your close friend that's fine the rest of the people just be honest with them that's what i wanted to do and that's exactly what i told you sir i did not want to go that fast and he wasn't expecting that he probably never gets that because i bet you everybody makes up different stories as to why they're not holding the pace or whatever nobody really cares who cares you know as long as you know it's like it's no big deal you chose to come to the ride you met people you choose to leave whenever you want see right here we're riding civilized i'm right at the top of my zone too so i'm sitting in i'm i don't i didn't plan i'm not gonna pull we got a guy named garrett and he's he's the classic cyclist that i wish we could clone kind of like a mo uh because this guy rides for the group this is the first time i've ridden with him i hope we get him on camera because i gave him kudos already on our board but this is a cyclist that came to our group first time on this ride he approached paul and he said if i do anything that is inconsistent with the etiquette of your group please let me know i found out later i was not there for the conversation but that notwithstanding i'm here i'm riding right now as you guys see we're on honia egypt road we're doing 22 23 which is not easy but it's not super hard you're working it's fast but manageable he rode like that the whole ride there were there were stretches where we were coming off camera out of richards there was a breakaway so to speak four to five riders rode off the front going faster he could have gone with them i watched him he consistently looked behind and was giving the rest of the group his wheel but keeping us in close contact with the breakaway almost like a super domestique for a team would do for his team leader this guy continually looked behind it was clear that he could have ridden with the guys who were off the front but before that happened i had an opportunity on a road called base chapel because mike barreras had a, 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 a puncture and so we had an opportunity to slow down and i i used that to thank him for this pull that he's doing here now he's been pulling since we turned on the honia egypt road i thanked him for the pull because i told him i said this is how i was taught that when you're riding with a group you ride with the group you do what will keep the group together so we're all working we're not but not everybody's dying everybody's got different levels so everybody can find a rhythm i talk about that all the time he, he'd go hard when the road would go up but not sprint he would just you know it almost like a diesel just just keeping things chugging along and i thanked him for that and i told him man if only we had more people doing this and the front death well it's not funny but what ended up happening is he continued to do this throughout the ride like later in the ride hour five or six he's pulling us up the last hill we came back on honia egypt through the neighborhood on the same road that's the last big hill the, the one we descended earlier he, he had taken a long pull already so when he pulled off somebody just raised the pigs which caused him to be in a bit of bother well he'd been pulling for miles and that's the stuff so he and i chatted about it so we wrote it together and i just told that you know some people just don't know they don't know the sport they don't understand and they're just doing stuff you know i said so don't don't mind it but uh it was a joy riding with him i hope he comes back uh, we don't have his his name or number we have not added him to our board but he heard about the ride somehow and i hope he joins us again um 
he's one of these riders who is not putting on a show. He's very humble. He just rides. He doesn't do a whole lot of talking. He just rides his bike. But he's cognizant of what's happening to the group, what's happening to the line. He's not just pulling. He's constantly looking back to see, is this guy still on my wheel? Is everybody here? You, you, you can tell. You know what I mean. You probably got people like that in your group. Those are the kind of riders I like to compliment. Because they're not riding for themselves. They're riding for the group. They're helping the group along. That's what a group ride is. You know, he's not here to put, he didn't come to put on a show. Now, granted, there were other riders who were riding much faster than him, but he was the one I gave my kudos to because that really worked because like Logan on the right there with the white jersey, early in the ride when I, I heard his voice, I didn't turn around, but I heard him. I said, hey, is that Logan? Because he hasn't been here in a bit. He said, yeah. Then he told me, he said, you know, my power is not that good. And so I'm just, I don't know how I'm going to do whatever. But, you know, he's out here. It's good to have him out. And I'm using him as an example. There are people who may have been off the bike for a while, whatever else, but they're in decent condition. They're not doing their full program. So by keeping things like this, you get more. I mean, this was the biggest group that we ever had coming back. You know, you guys here, a lot of times we go to Taco, people split. People go home, do whatever else. This was the largest group that made it back. And this was almost a 90-mile ride. So this day was just, the, besides the weather being just fair, it's 21 Celsius, 70 degrees. The weather's fair, so everything was nice, but that's what, so his, his focus in trying to keep the group together, we stayed mostly together. This guy here, Dan Jaworski on film right now, even mentioned to me, he said, we stayed mostly together. I said, yeah, you know, this was another part of the ride. And so when you, when you take your group out, don't, there's no joy in dropping everybody if you have the capability. Because then who you gonna ride with? You know, this is not a, a race where you wanna get to the finish line first. So you should ride in a manner that encourages people to come out next week or the week after and look forward to, hey, I'm gonna go ride with those guys. That's what I'm getting at in a, in a roundabout way. Make your group fun to ride with. Even if it's fast, let it be reasonable. Like our ride, we didn't we didn't restrict anybody because it's funny, it's off camera, but when I got to the store, after that, Yusuf had asked me, I've got my bottles done, when he asked me when I told him I didn't want to go that fast. We were about to leave, and my brother from another mother, Abby, said, oh, I talked to Christian, one of the guys who were hammering. I talked to Christian and asked him to take it easy. And I told him, well, why? What should he slow down to? I said, you don't have to follow him. He, he didn't put a gun behind your head. And then Jerry was within earshot and he laughed. But I really meant that. You don't have to follow someone who's not riding like you want to ride. Now, if you're challenging yourself for a while and you want to stay on that wheel to see how long you can last, fine. But don't ask the person to slow down. This ride does not have a speed cap. We come out, who's there, we ride. So we all decide, okay, this guy's going off the front, like coming back. If somebody goes off the front, doesn't mean you have to. You can stay maybe with the, the main pack or whatever else. That's kind of what we did, but it was more of a, what's the word? It happened organically. There's no announcement, there's no planning. We don't control anybody here. I want the very fast people who want to go hard to go hard if they choose to. I want the other people to have the discipline to know, well, maybe I don't want to do this today or whatever else. They can make that decision. And then you have these splits, but you know, they're within like 20, 30 seconds of you. You meet them at the store and you continue. That's, that's cycling. That's what happens in races. You know, because then if you go with the fat, the very fast guys and you get tired of it, you can let them go and then knowing that there's a group behind to pick you up, then you join them. You know, that's the way. I don't want this group to exclude any particular person. As I said earlier in some of the other videos, the, the people who go slower than this pace have not been showing up. So there's no reason to do a, a third group, so to speak, or a second group until we get people showing up. You know, because the rumor is this ride is fast. I guess the rumor's out there. That's what I hear because people send me messages and whatever. Well, if you show up, we'll find you a ride. That, that's how a ride here is for all. 
So yeah, so I don't tell people, oh, take it easy or police them. I, I'm, I'm not going to control anybody. I don't want to control. This is leisure. Let people have their fun. All will require you to be safe. And everybody was very safe. You know, for the most part. We don't want anybody. We don't want no crashes, no issues. We want everybody to get home in one piece. And, you know, so I, I say these things so you can incorporate it into your ride. Because uh, make your ride fun for every level of rider and let's grow this sport we have a lot of cyclists that avoid group ride because there's a lot of drama because not everybody is real some people come to put on a show they they say a lot of stuff they don't mean and it ends up being like you're a general hospital or all my children i don't care for that foolishness when i open my mouth i mean what i say i don't play games takes too much energy too much to keep up with speak your mind be truthful and honest you don't have to you don't have to remember it the truth just is there you don't have to remember it it's, it's the, 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 the untruth that you got to remember lies you lie one time you got to make another lie to cover the other one and you can't really keep up with that one you know so be honest with people don't BS them they can they can smell that a mile away sometimes it's best to just not say anything just say good morning how you doing and move on so yeah so uh i saw yusuf later at the end of the ride and he thanked me for organizing the ride the same guy who asked me what i had a mechanical he was very happy i think everybody enjoyed the ride everybody posted on the board what a great ride thanks for organizing we went out of town they loved it because we were on a lot of very quiet roads. we were not competing with cars cars we went to uh, a road called tagliaferro and uh cedar hill and branch crossing you know you might get a car once every 10 minutes if that i don't think we even were passed by our car so the people people loved it the cyclists here they loved it that's the guy on the left in the gray jersey he's clipping in he's turning left next to laura that's garrett that's a cyclist <laughs> I hope we get a close-up. He pulled us all the way. He just pulled off. He's the one been doing all the pulling. Steady but hard. You know. And so it was a good workout. So once he got off the front, then all hell broke loose. And that's why in a few miles, I let them go. Because it, it, it got to where I was like, it felt like we were racing. <laughs> and that's why I titled it Race Space. So right here, it just got hard. Somebody else took over. I'm not going to mention who. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with going very fast. But for those of you who find that, man, I don't know how long I can hang, hang on. Do not go too deep if you're doing a lot of hours. You know, if it's close to the end of the ride or whatever, you want to see, oh, can I hang on for another kilometer or till the store? That's fine. But if you dig too deep, you pay the price later. Because it takes a while to replenish your stores. If you if you burn out all your, your glycogen, then it takes a while for the body to replenish it. And then before you know it, you start hitting the wall. So you got to listen to yourself. And that will help you make your decision. So right now we're going just too fast for what I wanted to do today. I'm, I'm right at sweet spot now. And I'm thinking, man, okay, how long are we going to do this? This road is going up slightly. It's a false flat. And we're really moving. I happen to be on the wheels. I'm staying where I am. There's somebody off the front already. There's a split. There's two. I think Laura's on somebody's wheel up there yeah laura's following but we already have a split that's how much faster we started to go it was very fast nothing wrong with going fast if that's your day to go fast but you know i was doing over 110 miles you know <laughs> you know and so my, for me i was like no i'm not this is not a, a 20 mile sprint or like a criterion so I'm sitting in there, I'm monitoring. So right now I'm entering zone four. You see, uh, Juan is pulling off. He don't like that pace, he's gonna slip to the back. He's using his head. He's gonna try to see if maybe slipping back, people will back up, but he doesn't like this pace because he was up here.
So yeah, I'm staying there, but I'm like, nah, I'm already in zone four, 169 beats per minute. There is no way I'm gonna ride for six hours at race pace. Not gonna happen. So I'm thinking, so now yeah, my heart rate's coming back down. So I'm monitoring myself. I'm mentioning this because nothing I do on my bike is by accident. Every time I go out, that's why most of the time I train by myself or I train with Paulie Long guy. Because we, we make a plan and we go out, we talk most of our ride, we can chat. We rode on Sunday, we did 50 miles, it felt like 30. We just had a blast, it was a beautiful day. We just spun in conversation mode. We were going slow. There were stretches where we were doing 18, 20 miles an hour, depending on the condition, but we were not hammering. Our speed was still within the aerobic zone. And then the ride was not to go fast. It was basically a recovery ride, so to speak. But those are the rides that teach your body how to process fat. That's when you really get fit. You know, riding hard all the time puts a lot of stress on your body. You get stressed from, from workouts, you get stressed from life. So all those stresses add up. You have to make sure you've recovered from the stresses you've put on your body before you decide to go very hard. So the stress doesn't just come from you working out. You're not some monk living in a tent where everybody cook all your food for you, pay your bills, and you don't have to do nothing. You have to live your life. So you gotta deal with other stresses and all of that affects your body. That's why sometimes you get up and you just feel great because you've had like good rest or whatever. That's a good day to push. So if you get up, you're tired. You couldn't sleep the night before the ride. Whatever was going on, sometimes I have these nights. You, you don't have very good sleep. That's not the day to push very hard. That's the day to sit in more. And maybe later in the ride, you, you'll feel like, okay, yeah, I can try something here. Always got to be using your head. I've got it in a big gear and I'm just kind of rolling it because we're going slightly uphill. I don't really feel like spinning too much at this moment. I'm going to keep shifting and just using the momentum here. But it never let up. And so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to back off because this is like maybe 45 minutes into the ride. We started at 7, you know. I said, no, this is too early to be going this hard. So when you're riding, Pay attention to your engine. Just like when you're driving your car, you watch the tachometer, you're watching the temperature, you know. The modern cars now, they'll, they'll, they'll let you know. You know, sometimes lights come on or whatever, but you know what I mean. You gotta monitor your gauges. The guys in NASCAR, when they're driving their car, they got gauges for everything. They watch that because you can't just push those motors to the limit all the time. You break stuff. And your crew chief and we will not be happy if you continually breaking stuff. You, you break stuff, you're not going to finish the race. The idea is to finish. We're going up this hill hard. 4%. So I'm back at sweet spot. So I'm thinking, okay, if I can stay here, yeah, maybe I'll make it a taco with the group. But I'm thinking still, I really need to be 12 to 13 beats below. I need to be 150 or lower. Preferably 140. <laughs> you know, so I'm 20, 26 beats above where I need to be. That means my body is processing different fuel sources. ATP, glycogen, whatever. That's not what you want to do on a very long day. So I hope this makes sense. So I don't care what anybody else is doing. I'm paying attention to me. And that's how I do it. Because what happens is by monitoring that, it's like having a, 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 a limited amount of gas in your car, but you want to race everybody to the stop sign. You will burn out your fuel. You got to drive more conservatively on those uh, uh, excursions where you don't have enough fuel, you know. You don't want to burn all your gas. Like when you low on gas, you don't mash the pedal. You, you feather it till you get to the gas station to fuel up. 
So we're going to turn right here. I don't know if I stand or not. I probably don't. I'm, just, I'm trying to conserve. I think I remain seated. But my cadence will go up. No, it didn't go up much. I guess they didn't go that hard. Yeah, because I was thinking about, okay, how do I... I'm trying not to expend too much energy. I think I'm in front of Mike Barreras here. Let's see, where am I? Because in about uh, maybe two kilometers, I pull out the line. Now I'm pulling out the line and there's a rider, there's several riders behind me, so I wave them up because I don't want them to be gapped. Once I decide I'm going to get off the wheel, I stay in my position, I drift to the right and I wave them up so they can slide by me, use my draft to get behind the wheel. And there's one guy, I don't even know him very well, I don't even know his name. He rides with us from time to time. He asked me, are you okay? <laughs> I told him, I said, you better get in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm waving you up. Yeah, are you okay? I say, I, I understand, but uh, this is not the time. I said, you better, I said, I thought I said, get in there. Yeah, I'm okay. Of course, I'm okay. That's why I'm pulling out, because I have sense. <laughs> I pulled the pin. That was it. I have, you know, I have plans for this ride. You know, so don't let others hijack your ride and ruin your ride. Be disciplined. So I should title this Discipline Cycling. That's probably what I should do. And I'm going to change the title as I, I, it just hit me. That's what it needs to say. Discipline Cycling. You have no discipline, then you basically will have no control in the outcome. Because even if you're feeling great in a race, you got to be disciplined. Because it's not always the strongest rider that wins. It's the smartest rider. Sometimes the smartest rider can beat a stronger rider. That's what they call tactics. So use your head, tetanship. So right here, I'm already at sweet spot. We're turning. This is when I make my decision. I'm like, I'm pulling off and I'm going to spin it to the store. We're under probably eight kilometers from the store, probably five miles. I think I'm behind Paul here. I thought I was in front of Mike, but I think I'm behind Paul. Yeah, so we turn and this road is a great. See, it says 0.6. It's gonna go up, then it'll kick up to two, three percent in the curves. We, I know this road. And I'm thinking, hmm, there's a lot of climbing to come. You know, cause where we're going, it's climbs galore. Up to certain stretches, eight, nine percent. You know, on 1486 out of Richards, so. I was like, somewhere around here, I pulled out. You'll see my watch drop. It's right now, it's 300 or something. See, it's now it's 100. Yeah, this is where I pulled out, I think. I think it's where I pulled out because I waved them up. I'm behind Paul. I waved them up and I dropped my pace so I can stay aerobic and continue to process fats. So when you have a long day, you got to ride conservatively. Even if you're racing, you still got to race conservatively. You got to save it for the sprint. No point sprinting early. So you see my speed? 20 kilometers an hour. I've already pulled out of the pace line. I've already waved those guys up. So I'm done with them. So the rest that you're going to see is Paul sitting in and they're riding to the store. So Paul had a different plan for this ride. I don't think he rode much this week. He's gonna sit in the wheels. He's not gonna take any pulls unnecessarily. He's gonna sit in the wheels and get his ride in and get his workout. I did a lot of volume this week, mostly aerobic. Few stretches where you know I rode with the Romeo guys. Whenever you ride with a group, you know, there are stretches where you're gonna go harder than you wish. If you look at my heart rate now, I'm back in the 150s. That's what I'm monitoring back there. So I dropped the effort. There, were, there was another rider that also pulled out of the line and he he looked back at me. I, I just, I told him to keep going. I don't know if he even saw me tell him to keep going. I wanted to just do by myself and come in. 
So they're probably still riding at 23. And I'm riding slower than that. I'm riding about, you know, 13, 14 miles an hour or whatever back there on that climb. I'm trying to get my body down. You see, now I'm below 150. And that's where I want to be. And I'm glad I did that because I finished the ride strong. Because we, when we got to the neighborhood on the way back, hour six, it was on. So resist the urge to have others dictate what you do. Only do what works for you. That's discipline cycling. So you're probably wondering, okay, discipline cycling, why? Well, here's the thing. Even if the group is going at a pace and you choose to stay there, you have to monitor how you feel after. Um, uh, there's a guy named Mark Allen. He coaches now. He used to do Iron Man or whatever. I listen to him. Some, there are a bunch of other coaches out there now, former athletes, accomplished athletes. He said that he'd get home and he'd be wiped out. I mean, he wouldn't feel good, you know. So, what what happens when you overstress your body? Because everybody's different. You can have injuries, you can have muscle pulls, you can have different issues. Whether it's cycling, running, whatever. When you do too much too soon, you pay the price. You know, what's the point of riding your bike or running and coming home and you can't even go out and do stuff with your family? because you're so tired <laughs> you know that defeats the purpose you know you're, you're supposed to be doing this for health and fitness riding hard all the time is bad for your health <laughs> that's proven so use your head that's a gem don't be uh following your ego you have nothing to prove to anyone so use your head and as you become a more experienced rider you should be able to make those adjustments. Imagine, uh, I mean, when I started cycling on one, one ride, I bumped once. I read up on it, I learned from it. And, right, and my motto now is never get hungry on the bike. Get it, learn get it. from it, learn from what you're doing. Don't just do the same thing all the time unless you like the result. So if you find that you, you're not sleeping well or whatever else, you're riding too hard. You have too much stress. And it's not just from cycling. It's a combination of cycling and life. Your sleep should be normal. You should feel good when you get up. If you're not feeling right, that's not the time to ride hard. Just remember that. Use that as a basic gauge. And you don't need to explain to anyone unless you choose to. You don't owe anybody an explanation when you go to a group ride as to why you let them go whatever. That's your choice. You need to know why. That's what's important. Just remember that. Remember that most people riding bikes don't have a clue what they're doing. They're just out riding. They can't replicate when they're going to feel good. So they can't get ready for a, an event because they don't have the recipe. They just ride. They do the same thing all the time and they plateau. You need to go easy and then when you decide to go hard, it needs to be very hard. And then when you're done, you rest hard. That's what the body likes. And you don't go hard every day. You drove your car at maximum speed every day, the engine wouldn't last. <laughs> yeah, you know, so a lot of riders are bothered or they, they're, they're intimidated into thinking that, oh, if I, if I leave the group, then I gotta explain, I gotta make up a story as to why. Nah, nobody cares. It's like, you know, if you know why, that's all that matters. It's, they're not working for you at this moment, let them go. So a lot of riders just don't come back when the group doesn't work for them. And you just, you, all of a sudden your group dwindles down to where you got the, the four fastest people showing up all the time. That's boring, you know. So you, you, you gotta be more accommodating. That's why I pointed out what Garrett did. Garrett did what I pointed out throughout this ride. I'm talking 
hours on end at every stage of the ride. That's just, he was very cognizant. And then when I spoke to him, he told me, well, you know, when you ride with a group, so he's a learned cyclist. He's a cerebral cyclist. Besides the fact that he's a strong rider, he's a cerebral rider, like Maurizio Topotopini. So, uh, yeah, we need more of them in our area, in our sport. This stuff I talk about all the time. Yeah, he could have gone faster, but he dropped his effort enough to where everybody's working. He just sits up there longer. You saw that pull on the Asian. He was pulling at least 30 minutes. Doesn't make him uh, uh, slower. You're going to be strong. If you can pull the group for 30 minutes where everybody's working, when you decide to go hard for five minutes, that's going to be really fast. Simple logic. So don't, don't feel the need to be a hero. Ride with your group. It's a group ride. Encourage the growth of your group. Encourage the unfamiliar faces. Open the doors to other cyclists because they, they're intimidated by the so-called very fast. And we could all learn from each other. Welcome them into the fold. And then you, you know you split your group accordingly. You know, like Sun and Ski does it, they have A, B, C, whatever, when their ride starts. That's what I'm hoping will happen with this group. We get more people coming out and we'll split them up. And one day I'll ride with the C, I don't care. I get enough riding and I, you know, I like being on my bike. I don't need to be setting world speed records. So the, the, the ride has settled down here. I, I'm looking at them now, I mean, I wasn't there, but the ride has settled down. And just remember that if you go to your ride and somebody comes and they're changing the pace or whatever and you decide okay I'm going to just see how long I can last or whatever don't feel obligated obligated to help them they're gonna get tired at some point if you hang in there and, and it's working for you when they get off the get off the front return the pace to your group pace Don't feel like you got to burn all your matches because this person was riding at 27 miles an hour. Who cares? You sit on them. Don't help them. <laughs> I, got that, I got that phrase from somebody. And he knows. <laughs> Say, you sit on them. <laughs> Cycling is funny. So every social group has its issues, has its drama. Uh, in this group, I don't participate in it. I listen to it, I hear it, I just smile. Because I don't have time for that. <laughs> you know, because uh, the way I'm wired, when I open my mouth, I think about what I'm going to say. And I mean what I'm going to say. I don't BS people. If I ask you how you doing, I really want to know. If I ask you if you need help, I want to know. <laughs> yeah, the mob said to go left and then turn. Yeah. That road's under construction. Uh, I need a drink. Yeah, I see that. Paul Paul forgot his bottles on this ride, so he bought a bottle of Gatorade. That's what he's using. It's a 20 ounce, I think. It fits in our cage. And he's got a bottle of water, regular, but the, the temperatures were cool enough that they worked for him. That's not like him, so that, I think somehow something distracted him on his ride when he was setting up his, his kit bag. Usually we pack our kit bag at night when we go to rides where we're driving. Yeah, we pack it at night so we don't forget stuff. So we probably had a lot going on. We all do. So uh, 
uh, I, I must stress the fact that I could be here riding with these guys, but I made my decision based on my long-term plan for this ride. I don't regret it because of how I performed on this ride because I wasn't sure that they were going to settle down or whatever and I did not want to use up my fuel that I had saved for my very long ride because not everybody's doing what I'm doing you know or what Paul is doing we all have our plans you know, so you got to stick with you got to stick with your plan and don't don't be deterred if the group fits into what you're trying to do then you 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 sit with them and somebody made the comment and that's a fact i don't know if it was on the channel or not that it's hard to find a, a group that works for you it is it's a social thing uh people come with different goals attitudes whatever it's hard to find a group that works for you so what you want to do is ride with the group that's working for you at that moment and if this stop working for you let them go look for another group <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, it's hard to find. That's just, it's always been the case. Is that you know? That, that's how they just find a group that works for you. So depending on your mood, let's say, oh, I want to ride hard today. Look for a fast group. Oh, I want to chill. I want to do a cafe ride. Look for a cafe ride. We have a thing in the area called Chasing Watts. Chasing Watts. W a t t s dot com. And you put your zip code in there. It's, it's a website, you put your zip code in there, it will tell you all the rides that have been registered in your area, upcoming rides. And you can look to see which one you want to choose. And you know, Abby puts, puts his ride there and so forth. So keep looking for rides because riding with a group is nice. There are a lot of cyclists that don't ride with groups. They have their reasons, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with riding alone. I like to break up because most of my rides I do solo because my schedule is erratic. Every now and then I'll join the Romeo group, especially when Laura was hosting last week. I did two of their rides. Uh, but find a group because it breaks up the monotony. You don't have to stay with the whole group, right? You could start your ride, pick up the group, ride with them for a little bit, then let them go finish your ride. I do that sometimes. And uh, even Maurizio does that sometimes. He'll pick up the group and say, oh, I'm just, I'm just here with you guys until we get to that point because I got to be home at 9 or 10 or whatever. So he'll stay with the group when it meets his need and he'll branch off. But by riding with the group, it will break up the, I guess, the monotony of always just being by yourself. So I look forward to this Saturday ride because it breaks up my week because I ride mostly solo. And I'm working on things when I ride solo. So when I come to the group, I can go faster in my aerobic zone because I've been training my body to stay there and burn fats. And, and if you stick with it long enough, your base will be so huge that you won't be tapping into your glycogen stores early. I hope this helps you guys. Go ahead and do some research and learn about what I call relax. There's a, there's a group called Relax, Relax Running. I was watching their podcast on YouTube. So I guess this it would be dubbed Relax Cycling. You don't need to be on the rivet every time you get on your bike. You don't drive your car the same way. So why should you ride like that? It, and it's not healthy for you to ride like that anyway. But work on your form, work on your bike fit because that will eliminate injuries it will make you look forward to the next ride work on your bike handling that will help you stay upright you know pay attention to how what your wheels are doing every time you turn so every ride you're on pay attention to those it's the little things that matter you go around a curve if there's leaves in the middle how does it feel when i go over these leaves you can't lean your bike too much if it's wet and there's leaves they're, they're slippery pay attention to that learn each time okay so i'm probably about 30 seconds plus behind these guys just spinning in i probably stopped at the light see it says zero kilometers i probably stopped at the light so this is part of what we did on saturday it was an awesome day an epic day for cycling for me Remember, Sarabi. get your K's in and keep the doctors fired. Yeah, doctor I'll let you listen to these guys. I wasn't here. I didn't know what it said. Oh, have mercy on me. Oh, 
Nope. 